Hi, this is Kaylee Whalen, and I'm coming to you off the shore of the Thai island of Gatau, one of the most famous diving sites in the world. And I'm about to dive on Champan Pinnacle to engage in one of my favorite activities, being in the water. But in this video, we're gonna talk a bit about transphobia and the experiences of trans people in the water with harassment and specifically trans students and athletes who want to engage in activities like swimming and the current moral panic over trans athletes. So stay tuned. Hello from beautiful Goddow. This is one of the most world famous destinations for scuba diving. And it's one of the activities I enjoy most. And in this video, I'm going to show you some footage of me scuba diving while I talk about transphobia, trans rights for students, including locker rooms and competing on sports teams and swimming. Time to put on the wetsuit. This is the worst part because it's <laughs> Swimming, being in a bathing suit, was often a source of great stress while growing up, related to gender dysphoria, discrimination, and harassment. And that's what I'm here to talk about today. Not just my experiences with swimming, but the bigger picture of trans people being able to safely participate in athletic activities like swimming including also using locker rooms and accessing gender affirming care. All suited up and ready to go, so let's dive. This is my second video where I talk about trans athletes and students being able to play sports. And I think it's necessary because there's been unrelenting attacks on the ability of students and professional athletes, especially transgender women and girls, to participate in sports since I made my last video in January 2022. Currently, 18 states have laws banning trans athletes in schools, many of which have been enacted in the last year. That means that 30% of LGBTQ youth living in the United States live in a state that bans them from participating in sports with the gender that they identify with. Also this year, FINA, also known as World Aquatics, enacted a near complete ban on transgender women participating in the highest levels of athletic competition, including swimming in the Olympics. This is in addition to bans on trans students using locker rooms and bathrooms matching their gender identity, and also bans on accessing gender affirming care, which can make someone feel more comfortable with their body. As a trans activist and former roller derby athlete, it feels like a really dark time to be alive, seeing this massive backlash against the freedom for trans students and athletes to fully participate in society. For me, it feels like the vision of a more trans inclusive future that I thought was surely coming when I came out as a trans athlete in 2011 is being taken away. And not only that, transgender people have become scapegoats and whipping girls for a rising fascist threat in the United States. Trans people and LGBTQ people are being threatened with horrific violence. This includes the Club Q shooting, bomb threats against a children's hospital based on conspiracy theories about gender affirming care, and targeted harassment of trans teachers. Trans athletes, including NCAA swimmer Leah Thomas, have become demonized through lies that trans women are somehow dominating sports. And this has been weaponized to further escalate this anti-trans rhetoric. It's a completely unfounded moral panic, and it's not just affecting trans people. Transphobia is being used as a stepping stone to move people to white supremacist, anti-Semitic conspiracy theories, which are also contributing to problems like climate change denial. And as an environmentalist who enjoys nature, I'm deeply scared about global warming, ocean acidification, coral bleaching, and I'd love for future generations to be able to enjoy islands and scuba diving like this. 
I'm not going to go much more into these conspiracy theories and moral panic around trans people, but you can check out my previous video, The Turf to Fascist Pipeline, and I highly recommend you check out a video by Kaylin Conrad and Little Hoot about uh, conspiracy theories and this moral panic. It's called What is a Groomer? Referencing Matt Walsh's horrible hit film, uh, What is a Woman? And I also highly recommend you check out Jesse Gender's video, The Continually Escalating Anti-LGBT Rhetoric. Yet in the face of this moral panic, we cannot give up hope. The fight for trans inclusion in sports, the fight for trans kids to be able to safely use locker rooms, bathrooms matching their gender identity, is about so much more than sports. It's about the freedom for trans kids to build camaraderie and friendships while competing on a team, challenge themselves physically and mentally. It's about the freedom to live free of harassment, the freedom to not be put into a box based on gender roles that go against the very grain of our being. It's about the ability for trans kids to feel safe learning how to swim, being with peers that match their gender identity. Learning how to swim can save one's life. It also can make one be able to enjoy activities being on the water or being in the water, like paddle boarding, kayaking, and of course, scuba diving and snorkeling. And finally, this is about the ability for trans people to inspire each other and everyone else as athletes, because athletes are held up in role models in society, and we shouldn't be denying trans people that. So while times may seem dark, time and time again, we've seen the most proven way to open up people's minds and combat transphobia is through trans people sharing their stories, which I'm going to try to do in this video. If there's one activity that strikes fear into the hearts of trans people, it's swimming. Beaches, lakes, pools, anywhere where swimsuits are the designated uniform Transgender people often feel the most exposed, the most judged, and the most deeply vulnerable to harassment. Especially for those of us who have visibly gender non-conforming bodies, we're deathly afraid of being harassed for our bodies being seen as inappropriate, wrong, a freak. We're made to feel shameful for being out in public in a swimsuit or tight-fitting clothes if our chest or genitals don't match what society expects of a man or woman. This was demonstrated by the immense amount of harassment trans woman activist and TikToker Dylan Mulvaney received for Dylan's Normalize the Bulge video. This harassment included body shaming from arch conservative trans public figure Caitlyn Jenner, who added to the dog pile of abuse Dylan received after Dylan interviewed President Biden about the importance of gender affirming health care for trans youth. In short, outrage over how a trans woman looked in public was used to derail and distract from a critical conversation she had with President Biden about life saving, gender affirming care for youth at a time when that access to health care is under attack across the United States. And I too know what it's like to be made to feel ashamed about my body, be judged in public, and be harassed. I know this feeling all too well, including the fear of being in a locker room or wearing a swimsuit. For me, water is a big part of the story of my life. It started with sailing with my parents on the Chesapeake Bay, taking swimming lessons at my local swimming pool, going canoeing, whitewater rapids, rowing crew in high school, and even snorkeling in the Caribbean with the Boy Scouts. Do you think being exposed to this much water would have made me used to it? But as a kid, I hated being in a swimsuit or in a locker room or in a tight crew rowing uniform. I may not have known I was transgender because these terms were so rare and misunderstood in the 1980s and 1990s when I was growing up. But I just knew something about my body made me uncomfortable. And other people, especially other kids, noticed it too. And that made me an easy target for bullying and harassment. You see, at a young age, my father forced me to join the Boy Scouts out of a desire to force me to man up, 
and act more typically masculine for my age. Well, you can see how well that worked out. And boys, they can spot weakness from a mile away and they love picking on the weak one, me. I was the weird kid, the science kid, the sensitive kid who might even cry. And yes, the person who clearly failed at being masculine. I endured endless verbal and physical harassment and sometimes sexual harassment and assault for years from these boys. And it doesn't, and it wasn't just when I was around the water, although that did make it worse. While camping in the woods, I might expect to find myself pelted with a shower of pine cones at any moment. And once I was tied to a tree. At night, I might find potato chips in my sleeping bag or have my cot dragged out of my tent and dumped in the woods. Some kids even figured out how to make homemade grenades from film canisters and light anywhere matches. And so on more than one occasion, I'd be terrified by a firework bang right by my ear as they explode Yet while all these threats might await me in the woods, anything involving water and locker rooms was far worse. Showers were almost always group showers with shared locker rooms, and I could regularly expect physical harassment and even sexual harassment, made even worse by the deep shame and fear I had of my own body. One summer, I was lucky enough for my Boy Scout troop to go to the Florida Keys. For that trip, I had started wearing contact lenses which would help me while snorkeling. Well, the day of the snorkeling trip, I tried to put the lenses in my eyes, but it was a windy day with sand blowing around. And each time I tried, I couldn't get the contact lenses in my eyes. And even worse, I rubbed sand in my eyes. The pain became so great, I started to tear up, and my father was there. When he saw me struggling, he only made things worse, telling me to man up, tough it out, and quit crying because, as the Cure song says, boys don't cry. Of course, his harassment only encouraged the Boy Scouts there to pile on. And the whole week I endured endless harassment and bullying <clears throat> about the contact lenses and essentially failing at masculinity, which turned swimming and snorkeling in the Caribbean from being in paradise to being in a dangerous, absolute nightmare. And the first time my scout troop went to Virginia Beach was one of the most traumatizing events in my life. At the beach, as soon as the scoutmasters weren't paying attention, two of the larger boys pulled me into the surf and beat me mercilessly out of sight from the shore. I was bruised, bloody, and one of my teeth was chipped nearly in half and I had to get a filling. To this day, I've had to be careful biting into anything with my front teeth and in fact, I had to replace the filling a few months ago. Neither of my bullies were ever reprimanded. It seemed the scoutmasters simply regarded my constant bullying as boys will be boys. And if the Boy Scouts was about teaching someone masculinity, well, someone who wasn't properly masculine was an appropriate target. Did those boys who assaulted me know I was trans even before I had the terminology to call myself trans? Probably not. But as trans writer Jude S. Ellison Doyle has written about their own experiences with assault as a youth, it seems like a stretch to attribute all my attackers some prescient knowledge of my gender when I didn't even know it myself. What I was though was unassimilable. Something about me didn't fit the shape of the world. Like Jude, I knew the other boys sensed my unease with my body and they saw me as an easy target. And furthermore, as Jude writes, people with more power assault people with less and are shielded from consequences by their higher status, which was, which was exactly true for these older cisgender Boy Scouts who could get away with physical and sexual assault because of the patriarchal macho culture of scouting. I look at these experiences around the water and locker rooms and I often engage in what if thinking. What if I'd known I was trans, being able to identify that way and be treated as a girl at a young age? What if I'd been able to access puberty blockers so I never had to deal with a deeply dysphoric experience of my body being masculinized? What if I'd been able to use a girl's locker room instead of always being afraid of harassment in a boy's locker room or bathroom? 
What if I'd been able to take swimming lessons with girls, compete on a women's swim team like my sister? And what if being in the Boy Scouts, I could have been in the Girl Scouts? And what if one of my first memories of going to the beach was a positive one instead of a traumatic one? But this is a train of thought I try not to focus on because frankly, these what ifs can lead me down an incredibly depressing rapid hole. I honestly started crying when I started making this video and I had to stop reminiscing on these what ifs because I'm also deeply fortunate it's a bit of a miracle that I'm here in Gautau, enjoying the beach and scuba diving, because for so much of my life, water was a source of trauma. It took me years, perhaps even a decade, to recover from this trauma to finally be comfortable around locker rooms, beaches, swimming, and wearing a swimsuit. It's thanks to the trans community, and also thanks to the fact that I got to compete on a women's sports team for five years of my life. One of the most pivotal moments of my coming out and coming to terms with my body was going to Camp Trans in 2006, where we got to do an all trans swimming party at the river. Each of, what, each of us was there to support each other and say, I got you and I get it, when each of us expressed our own forms of gender dysphoria. Bathing suits were in fact optional, and it was the first time I'd seen trans people being so vulnerable yet so comfortable in their own bodies, thanks to the solidarity we showed each other. Slowly over the years, I became more comfortable around the water. Having other trans people around me helped. There was the time I went to the Trans Women's Action Camp in Oregon, where I got to swim in a rather frigid stream with other trans people and allies. There was the annual trans pool party in DC organized by trans advocates. These were safe spaces for trans people to enjoy swimming together and have each other's backs as we process gender dysphoria and perhaps even experience gender euphoria about wearing a swimsuit in public. I also played on the DC Roller Girls Women's Roller Derby League from 2008 to 2012. My time there was a bit bumpy at first and I did have to deal with some transphobia. Eventually, I came out publicly as a trans athlete to successfully fight for more trans inclusive policies for the Women's Flat Track Derby Association. Ultimately, my roller derby league and the two teams I skated on, the DC All Stars and Scare Force One, made me feel safe and it was the first time I shared a locker room and felt okay. These teams became my community and I'm grateful for the companionship camaraderie, sense of teamwork, and confidence I built competing on a women's sports team. Finally, I also have to admit that accessing gender-affirming care, including hormones and gender-affirming surgery, has helped me be comfortable in my body. I know hormones and surgery are not for everyone, but for me, being on female hormones and having bottom surgery, aka vaginoplasty and top surgery, made me feel more aligned with my body. Since then, I've even become a swimsuit model, although that was a big stressful experience competing in the Miss International Queen 2020 transgender pageant here in Thailand, which included a swimsuit competition and modeling swimsuits on a sailboat near Phuket. I actually had a bit of a meltdown the first time I modeled a swimsuit at the pageant, which you can learn more about in my meltdowns video. but. I managed to walk in the pageant in a swimsuit and made my sponsors and fans happy. No, I didn't win, but I was Miss USA in the world's most prestigious transgender pageant, and that was a huge victory. And yes, now I scuba dive too. I got my scuba diving license here on Gautau in Thailand in 2019, and I have to admit I'm glad I came to Gautau in Thailand because not only are the beaches and coral reefs beautiful, it's a place that's pretty tolerant of trans people, and there's even a trans community and trans cabaret show here on this small island. And yes, now I'm back three years later with over two dozen dives under my belt, and I'm so grateful for the diving license I got here. I've been able to dive World War II shipwrecks from the Japanese Naval Fleet in the Philippines. I've got to dive in the massive underwater sinkhole or cenote, known as the Great Blue Hole outside Belize. I've got to dive with eagle rays, sharks, turtles, and even once got to see a whale shark 
40 kilometers from here in Sail Rock. And yes, it's an, been an amazing experience. And yes, I'm incredibly lucky, not just to be able to dive, but to have a platform as a trans activist and YouTuber. I've now experienced gender euphoria and love being in a swimsuit or a diving wetsuit and being in the water. And I've competed on a women's sports team for five years in high level international competitions. Another amazing experience. I want other trans people, including trans kids, to be able to access the experiences I've had. And I love them to skip the bullying, harassment, and gender dysphoria and get to the joyous parts. If you're a trans person, and especially if you're a trans ally, I hope watching this may inspire you to take action. If you're trans, I want you to share your story too, and congratulations and thank you if you already are. If you're a trans ally, we need you to speak up as much as possible. We need you to talk about how every trans kid should have the freedom to be themselves, the freedom to use a locker room that safely matches their gender identity, the freedom to access gender affirming care, including puberty blockers that may help them feel more at peace with their bodies. They need to have the freedom to be on a sports team, including a swim team with other kids matching their gender identity and to be able to gain the feeling of teamwork, community, camaraderie, and the confidence and skills that competing in sports brings. We need to stop states from enacting laws that deny kids these basic freedoms in school because by doing so, they're denying the humanity of these trans students. As far as competing as a college age NCAA athlete or in high level competitions like the Olympics as an adult, I know the situation right now feels even more bleak. There's been a lot of negative press and we've lost some major ground. There's so many people out there peddling fake science and it's hard to know what information to trust, which is why I wanna point you to some of the best resources and fact checking. That includes the organization Athlete Ally, which is advocating for better policies at the NCAA and the Olympics, the publication Out Sports, and if you're on Instagram or TikTok, the fabulous Skylar Bailar, AKA Pink Manta Ray, a swimmer and trans athlete activist. I'd also recommend checking out the work of Olympic athlete Chris Mosier, who runs transathlete.org, and trans sports journalists Don Ennis and Carly Chardonnay Merlot. If you're watching this before February 2023, well, I'll actually be part of a panel at the National LGBTQ Task Force's Creating Change Conference in February in San Francisco. So I'll drop information about that below and on my social media. Until then, and if I don't see you, I hope you stay strong. Our community, the trans and non-binary community is here for you. And I know these feel like dark times, but we always have each other's backs. And we need to keep sharing our stories about how no student or athlete should be denied the freedom to be themselves. Thank you for tuning in. If you like this video, please give it a like, a share, and subscribe and hit that notification bell for future episodes. I make these videos as a public service to the community and a form of activism. So it costs a lot of money and I have a Patreon to help defer some of the costs. So if you can support me at patreon.com slash Kaylee Whalen, that would also help me a great deal in making future videos. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye.